the federal government pushing for stronger powers to deal with terrorist suspects. Welfare groups welcome federal research on problem gambling, but point to state responsibility. And history under the hammer, items snapped up from the NCG Members Pavilion. Good evening, I'm Barbara Pongratz. The federal government has ordered a review of Australia's anti-terrorism laws. It's seeking tougher powers to detain and interrogate suspects without charge. The Attorney General, Philip Ruddock, claims the case of alleged terrorist Willie Brigitte highlights weaknesses in the laws that ASIO has been given by the Senate. The opposition says tougher powers can't be justified until the existing ones are put to use. It's claimed Willie Brigitte is a frontline fighter for radical Islam, but in his five-month stay in Sydney, sparring at Tony Mundine's Redfern gym was as close as the 35-year-old got to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Newspaper reports claim the dreadlocked Frenchman went there often, earning the nickname Willie the Cowboy. Brigitte is now in his third week of interrogation in Paris, after being deported from Australia without ASIO interrogation. It's not clear that we would have had available evidence uh, for us to use those powers um, here in Australia at this time. Blaming the Senate for watering down interrogation powers he never used, Philip Ruddock has ordered a review of security laws, including a possible lengthening of the time in which a suspect can be held without charge. What I'm saying is the present powers now that we have are not sufficiently wide and we need to look at broadening them. The government will also go back to the Senate asking for the right to outlaw terrorist groups without needing the UN to do it first. Philip Ruddock's move on security powers will start early in the new year, setting up a pre-election debate over who's tougher on terrorism. But Labor isn't waiting. It's demanding he explain why ASIO isn't using the powers it already has. Use what you've got. Come and tell us where you detect flaws, if they're genuine flaws, and we will look at them from a genuine point of view. It's not only domestic opposition that's frustrating the government. Six weeks ago, Australia cleared the way for Lebanon to extradite Sydney man Bilal Kazal and his brother Ma for alleged involvement in a Beirut bombing. Bilal Kazal remains in Sydney, and Lebanese prosecutors have indicated they won't ask for him to come back. Greg Jennett, ABC News, Canberra. Red-faced Queensland police and rugby officials have altered their security arrangements for World Cup games in Brisbane after a spectator tried to tackle a South African player on the field. Police have reassured the players and officials that their safety is paramount, but they've conceded they can't guarantee that it won't happen again. Security was tight at Brisbane's Lang Park this afternoon as fans began arriving for the match between England and Uruguay. But the damage had already been done. With only seconds left on the clock in last night's match between South Africa and Samoa, a 29-year-old Sydney man breached the on-field security cordon. Oh, and there's a lunatic out there. The man was knocked unconscious in the incident and taken to the Royal Brisbane Hospital. He'll face a Brisbane magistrate tomorrow charged with interfering